Tier 1 Infractions. Let's talk about them. If you've been delivering for Amazon, you've probably heard about Tier 1 Infractions. The chances are, though, that no one quite explained what these Tier 1 Infractions are exactly. We're going to go over them because I think it is important to go over these things that can get you fired on the first complaint. Now to start, there are a total of 11 Tier 1 violations. Seven of them are behavioral, two of them involve fraud, one of them is related to unsafe driving behavior, and the last one is security. I'm going to go over the first seven behavioral infractions. The first one is public urination, defecation, or indecency. I don't think we need to explain what those mean. You get the gist of it, don't get caught. Now, if you're going out and actually exposing yourself to members of the general public, customers especially, you probably shouldn't be working around people. Number two is theft of property. I think we've all seen those videos where someone puts a package down, takes a photo to mark it as delivered, and then they go ahead and they take that package. Don't do any of that, don't lift anything off of someone's doorstep, don't take their shoes, don't take their dog, don't take their bike, don't take anything unless there's a sign that says thank you for doing what you do and they're offering you free drinks or food. This one's very ambiguous. This is the one that would actually concern me. Violation of Amazon policy, standards of professional conduct. What is to stop someone from filing a false complaint against you? How are you going to protect yourself against this? Let's say it doesn't happen around the van or at the doorstep. Let's say that a customer just calls in and said you called them a name and you tossed the package at them. How are you going to fight that? That's something to keep in the back of your mind. The next infraction would be violence, an altercation, or a threat. Obviously, you don't want to go around fighting random people throughout your day. It's not good for your health. There's a very big danger out there of running into the wrong person, especially when you're out driving and someone wants to cut you off and they're a little road ragey. Sometimes taking the higher road, being the bigger man, and just throwing your hand up saying, hey, my bad, is going to be a lot better than trying to get into an argument where the guy's already on the verge of losing everything and he's got a little friend in his pocket. Maybe you do too, but you don't really want to go down that direction. The next one is requesting a delivery fee, taking cash on delivery. Do I really have to explain this? Here's another one that's pretty vague as well. Other gross negligence or misconduct. What you have to do is think in a way, if someone doesn't like you, how are they gonna get rid of you? Some people out there just get off on making other people hurt. Sometimes it's a customer, it could be a member of dispatch, it could be your DSP owner, it doesn't really matter. What you have to think is, at any point I could run into a person like this, and if they have control over whether or not you come back to work tomorrow or not, that's definitely going to affect your mental health. Now Next on the list is unauthorized entry of a customer's home, car, or place of business. Fully entered. The key phrase here is fully entered. So you broke that barrier, you crossed that door, you got into their car, you went into their business after they said just leave it at the front, or you went inside their home. Partial entry is a tier 2 infraction, but I'll get to that when we talk about tier 2 infractions. We're just focusing on the ones that'll get you canned at the end of the day. Now we're going to move on to fraud. Now there are two infractions here that constitute fraud. You really have to be careful with these. The first one will be misuse of customer information. So let's say you have their phone number, their address, or their gate code, whatever it is. That is private information that's supposed to be held between you, Amazon, and the customer. You're not supposed to be saving any of these codes or remembering them for anything else other than this is your route that you normally do and it's become part of your routine. This is your habit. This next one is a very big one because it's almost a joke on the subreddit, especially if you're in a rural route. Dumping or abandoning customer packages with malicious intent, such as on the side of the road or on a dumpster. Of course, the burden of proof is going to be on you to prove that you didn't have malicious intent. Now, there is only one tier one infraction, and that would be related to fleeing the scene of an accident, property damage incident, or crime. I really don't have to explain this one. Now, the last tier infraction out of all of these 11 has to do with security, and this is very, very common, so pay attention. Leaving keys in an unlocked vehicle resulting in the theft of packages or the van itself. If someone manages to take your van and all the packages inside and you can't prove that you had the keys physically on you and you shut the van off, it's time to hop onto Indeed and start looking for a new job. They're going to let you go.
Now, if you noticed, a lot of these tier one infractions have consequences outside of being fired as an Amazon delivery driver. A lot of these can result in criminal prosecution. So what you want to do is make sure that you're being very careful if it's any of these very ambiguous ones. There are two that I mentioned specifically. And overall, just use your head and be a good person. So that's it for tier one infractions. I hope this cleared up exactly what they are. It's very simple and straightforward. Now remember, do be aware that you only need one tier one infraction to be permanently offboarded from Amazon's driver program. Next video I'm going to be covering the tier 2 infractions. You can have multiples of these and I believe they drop off after a certain time frame. So if you like the information that I gave out, if you like how it was presented to you, give me a like and a subscribe. I'm going to be doing more of these videos depending on time and energy level. I find them fun and relaxing and very enlightening and I hope I'm spreading out useful information that can actually help you get ahead. So when you're out on the road, be good, stay safe.